Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to our Create Mod tutorial series. Last episode we looked at all of the automatic power generation and today we're going to look at all the different ways we can modify the power that we are generating. First up we have a shaft. The shaft has a really neat UI where if we just hover over one end and right click we begin adding onto the shaft. We can also see when we hover over the very end of it that we get a little minus sign lets us know we're going to be attaching to that. That is really neat and we're going to see that UI used later on. The shaft is going to be one of your most used components and we're able to just simply attach it to machines and get them rotating. We can also attach shafts to the opposite side and continue our power going on. Next up are the cog wheels. There's a larger one and a smaller one. Let's take a look at the smaller one first. When we attach a cogwheel to the power, we get the same UI that we had on the shaft. This allows us to attach cogwheels very easily. But you'll notice that the attached cogwheels actually spin in the opposite direction. This allows us to adjust our machinery and rotate things in the opposite way that our power source is. We can also attach again and switch it back. The large cogwheel has some pretty cool features too. With the large cogwheel, we don't get to attach it directly above and below. You'll notice that the arrows are actually pointing outwards. So when we attach to the bottom here, it actually puts it at 90 degrees. There is no way to actually attach them directly side by side. By attaching the cogwheels at 90 degrees, it allows us to supply power vertically. We can also attach an additional one to this other side, and you can see that the first one and the last one we've attached are spinning in opposite directions. We've done the same thing as the smaller cogwheels, but in a straight line. Now it does take up a little bit of space, but we can fix that later. Now let's take a look at what happens when we combine the cogwheels. If we start with a small one and we power a larger one, we're going to notice that we can only set these on the corners. If we set it up here, the larger cogwheel is spinning at half the speed of the previous cogwheels. That is because we're going from a smaller one to a larger one. We can also do the exact opposite by starting with a larger cogwheel and attaching a smaller one that's going to double the speed of our next cogwheel. We can also do this again by adding a larger cogwheel and then attaching a small one. This one here is now rotating at four times the speed of the original. Now this is great and these look absolutely amazing, but sometimes you don't have this kind of space, especially as we get further and further out, you're going to need more and more space in your building. Now let's look at how we can do all this in a more compact way. Next up is the gearbox. We have a regular gearbox and a vertical gearbox. These do the exact same thing as the larger cogwheels, but in a lot smaller space. When we attach our regular gearbox here, we're supplying power from the back over to the sides and we also go straight through. And just like with the large cogwheel, every side is rotating the opposite direction. So our power is coming in counterclockwise, our output is now clockwise. It's the same thing with side to side. They're both rotating in opposite directions. With a vertical gearbox, we supply power straight through and up and down. And again, they're all rotating in opposite directions. So if we needed power to go up, but we needed the same orientation coming straight through, we just add another gearbox and suddenly the front and the back are rotating in the same direction. The same thing can be done vertically. Adding an additional gearbox up top will change the orientation of the output. Everything's great so far, but what if we want to shut off a machine without having to break components? Well, that's where the clutch comes in. The clutch supplies power in the same orientation it receives, but if we throw a lever on there, it shuts off the output. This allows us to shut off farms and other contraptions without having to break anything. Super neat. Sometimes we want to be able to change the direction of a machine on the fly, and that is where the gear shift comes in. When we supply power to a gear shift, it actually just flips the rotation of the output. This is great for contraptions like elevators, where we want it rotating one way to go up and another to go down. Things are great so far, but what if we have multiple machines in a row that need the same orientation and rotation? We can't do that with the small cogwheel because each one's rotation is opposite of the one it attached to. We also can't do that with a gearbox because it does the exact same thing. Each one is alternating and rotating the opposite direction. That's where the encased chain drive comes in. When we place the chain drive, we get to decide if we want to supply power vertically or horizontally, and we notice that all of the rotation is exactly the same. That can be very helpful depending on what type of machinery you're setting up. But let's say we want to adjust the speed of the attached chain drives. That is where the adjustable chain gear shift comes in. 
When we place the adjustable chain gear shift, it does the exact same thing as a regular chain drive. It supplies power to the sides. But by supplying it with a full strength redstone signal, we actually double the speed of all encased drives attached to it. That can be very helpful. This is also granular. Anything in between a one to two times speed increase is adjusted by simply adding more redstone strength. The sequence gear shift lets us do some really cool stuff, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. By placing it up here and right clicking the side, we actually get a UI. Here we get to program the gear shift in up to five sequences. By default, it's set to turn 90 degrees with a forward direction and the same speed as its input. We can also double the speed. We can go reversed. We can change the angle in here. So let's say we want it to rotate a full 360 degrees. We can also drop it all the way down to a single degree. The granularity gives us a lot of control over farms and other contraptions. We can also tell it to wait. We can choose anything from one tick all the way up to 30 seconds. So if we need to delay between actions, that's a simple way to do it. We can also use the gear shift to control mechanical pistons. We can control the length that they extend and retract. And we can adjust the speed on which way we want it to go. The sequence gear shift adds so much granularity and control, and I'm so happy that it's in the Create mod. The last thing we're going to look at today is one of the most space-saving things that the Create mod has, and that is the rotation speed controller. All we have to do is we set this down, we get a little UI here, and we get to actually choose the rotation speed of our output. We can go all the way down to one rotation per minute, or we can go all the way up to 256. This is the maximum speed that any machine can do, and you are going to need a lot of power to actually do this. But imagine how much space this would actually take up if we use the cogwheels. This is super neat, and you definitely need to be using these. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Next episode, we're going to be looking at early game machines and ore processing. That is going to be super exciting. If you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Leave a comment and let me know what machines and contraptions you'd like to see next. And we'll see you in the next one.